it's late. <laughs> He's going to be a little bit late. Um, hope okay. f- he might be here by the time. He's, he may he may not be here at all. It's fine. As I was saying beforehand, most of the people who will be doing the interactive stuff and researchy stuff for this session are here anyway. Um, yeah. So um, the recording. The magic there. nerds and the cleric. Magic nerds and Jojo. Um, <laughs> so okay, let's kick. Let's kick right in then. So recap last week. Last week, a group of adventurers, Ignium Seat, uh, returned to the city of Netherwinter to make use of uh, Wes's Wondrous Warehouse's magical transportation abilities. Uh, say that drunk three times. Um, <laughs> stopping off in a potion shop, stopping off to visit Kalanetta in the Moonstone Mask Tavern. Uh, you eventually went uh, uh, to Wes's, uh, who had who'd pre-arranged um, transportation through his wonderful warehouse. Which would take you through directly into the heart of Baldur's Gate. Uh, you went through. You were told not to speak to him should you see him. Um, as you went through, you did find a sleeping Wes, and also there appeared to be other fe- other beings, other creatures, something else in the warehouse, but was not investigated. Uh, you popped out, saw Wes on the other side, seeing a bit cheerier than he normally w- would be. Uh, but he bid you adieu, and off you went. Uh, explored the city of Baldur's Gate a little bit, uh, Giovanni showing you the haunts and taking you to a local tavern um, before pressing conversations were had and Giovanni had to go off and run some alone time. Uh, going to uh, the hospital just on the side of Lathandar's temple <coughs> to visit an old friend, an old mentor, and also unfortunately his mother who seems to be suffering from some kind of muscle-wasting disease that they are currently unable to resolve. Also found out where the airships are currently being constructed in a retrofitted area of the dock side. Um, <coughs> unsure of exactly what they're what's being built there, apart from a large cargo ship. Uh, <laughs> that's that, that's it. That'll fix it. Um, <laughs> thoughts and prayer might might actually help in this world. Actually, yes, thoughts and prayers probably would help quite a bit. <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna pray so hard, guy. You reconvened <laughs> at the at the la- the laughing ox, and and decided to head down to the city the city, um, the strange library monastery fortress of Candlekeep, hiring Ruffy, Scruffy's, bo- <laughs> Scruffy's brother, uh, taking the uh, the long trip down. Uh, you managed to gain entry by parting. <coughs> sorry, you managed to gain entry uh, by parting with your. Uh, the book Talia had left you of alchemical poisons and necromancy and their combinations in, in together. And that was enough to uh, gain your group um, f- apparently permanent access to <coughs> the, the halls of Candlekeep uh, to come and go as you wish. Uh, you went in and you spoke, spoke to assistant first reader Tethtoril, an old elven gentleman who seemed to be uh, the, almost the second in command here, second only to the Keeper of to- Tomes of Ulrond. Uh, you discussed uh, Mordenkainen, uh, who Tetheril regarded with some displeasure, uh, as he advised you that he did want study here, but not for long, thinking himself better of the place and heading off on his own. Uh, the only rec- the only link they had to him anymore was his old uh, apprentice, uh, an individual by the name of Wesley Morcus, um, <clears throat> who may or may not be a, a prior associate of yours. Uh, you arranged to spend some time there at Candlekeep, and you all indeed also offered uh, monetary ser- monetary rewards for any research performed by the scribes uh, of Candlekeep in your absence. Uh, retreating to the Candlekeep Inn, very, very uh, creatively named, it's actually just called the Candlekeep Inn, I think. Uh, Ranos, feel free to correct me. Um, but returning to the Candlekeep Inn, uh, just to bed down for the night. Tethril, having paid for your rooms and um, board for this night and this night alone. Is there anything that anyone would like to do um, before going to sleep? Are we level 12 now? You also leveled up, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, right. uh, I think we <laughs> technically get it after we wake up. You wake up. Morning. You will wake up at level 12, but you, f- you have that weird you, no, you, I think I sent I sent the other pl- my other pl- players through a weird dream sequence where they leveled up in their dream, <laughs> and really scared them for about forty seconds. 
because uh, I didn't know what the hell was going on. But yes, you did level up at the end of that session. If you have not done so, feel free to do it now, or you can do it a bit later. It doesn't really make a lot of difference, uh, for the first chunk of this at least. Yeah. So, is there anything anyone wants to do uh, before bedding down for the night and leveling up? I mentioned looking for dragons. You did? Oh, well, what I'll do is... I I'm forgot gonna to put that on the session. That's I fine. That I'm going to put the whole... All of that's going to feed into into the lore dump stuff. Okay. So we'll do all of the research stuff. We'll kick off tomorrow because you did get here quite late. Uh, you spent mm -hmm. the entire day travelling down from Boulder's <coughs> Gate and you didn't get here until about 8, 9 o'clock. Pretty tired from the trip. Um, so it's quite late in the evening. Yeah. Um, but is there anything okay. anyone wants to do that isn't book related? <laughs> okay. Just wanted to find the section, make sure I knew where it was. So come back do it in the morning. Very well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you all awake in the morning. Um, you assemble downstairs for breakfast, uh, which is surprisingly um, well stocked for a breakfast. Um, mm. Various meats and cheeses, toasts, pastries, and scones. That it's more well stocked here than you. Some of the some of the uh, standard taverns of Waterdeep. It's quite strange. Um, but Are many people is, around? There is no one but you in here at the moment. Hmm. It seems pretty. Ad it's not a big tavern. Sorry, it's not a big inn. Um, only has about six or seven rooms. Uh, it's not a huge place. It, Candlekeep is not necessarily much of a tourist destination. Um, mm -hmm. Most people that remain here are the monks and the wizards. M monks and mages, and also the guards, who have their own barracks. Um, visitors are, very, are not rare, but uh, rarely do they stay for long periods of time, unless they are studying there, uh, in which they would likely join the monastery, or uh, join alongside the wizards. Guests such as yourselves are not as common. Hmm. Uh, but still, it is well stocked, and there is plenty of food provided to you. So, nice. Ignim seat. It is the morning of... Let me get the date. Scone form. Scone form. Um, <laughs> it is the morning of Tuesday the 3rd of September. <coughs> mm, or is it the 4th? I think it might be the 4th, actually. Scone of scold. <laughs> that was that. It. Good joke. Uh, okay, so it is the morning of the 4th. Um, it is a nice... It's a cool morning. There's a bit of a, bit of a fog, fog around when you wake, uh, which quickly dissipates. So... Big Dream Seat. Is there anything you'd like to do today, apart from research? Or just I, want to I dive think right I want to look around. Hmm. Is it like a town? Like around Candlekeep, no. I guess. So, uh, yeah, you can have a, have a quick wander around. You kind of saw it a bit as you came in. But what you can see is Candlekeep is it's mainly comprised of one large building. So it's very much like the image you see in front of you. You've got this very large fortress-like building that sits in the middle. It's like a cross between a fortress and a monastery almost. Uh, that mm -hmm. um, is pretty much the entirety of the structure. That is Candlekeep. Outside of it, you have um, you have the outer walls that you can see as well, and inside that is uh, a large, effectively a large round courtyard almost, um, which comprises comprises of stables, the inn. Uh, it has a barracks and a keep in there as well. It is <coughs> it is it's a little bit like um, it's almost a bit like a larger version of vigil. It does very remind you of a uh, a fortress, a fortification, a camp almost, rather than a town. There are no shops here. Uh, there are no shops, there aren't pedestrians. Uh, there is a bit of farming land out back that you do notice where they seem to grow some of their own vegetables and herbs uh, and things like that. Um, but it's pretty sparse. There are a few people walking around, there are several guards, <coughs> and also you see monks in their plain robes kind of moving back and forth. Hmm. Um, we should. We should scry, I think. Sure. On the dragon people. <laughs> right. Okay. Maybe at four, whenever the sermon is, to see what they're being angry about right now. <coughs> you can you can book that in for later. One. Yeah. Do we have something uh, like? Does anyone? <laughs> did anyone grab a nail or lock of hair? Oh, I. Then we still have the clothes. 
I was thinking more of scrying on the uh, the balcony where they're talking down oh, from. Right, we can do that as well. Yeah. Just about yeah, gonna that... get a wisdom saving throw. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, don't so. I don't think you guys have seen the inside of the tent where um, Nira's parents were kept. No, mm. that's our only skate. So... Yeah, I, I saw it as well, but <coughs> still, it doesn't help since I can't cast strain. Yeah, you can just cast it on the balcony. You can just cast it on the balcony. If you let me read your thoughts, I have to take thoughts. Oh, that's an interesting idea. No. There's my head, Charles. And maybe this is the time to see what Modwin is all about. If you. Anyone yeah. care to uh, cast Legend Law? Need your ivory. I do have ivory for one more. You cast. got one more, do you? Okay. Yeah. Should probably also look for reagents. If if there's a place with reagents, it's probably here. Well, as I said, <coughs> there are no shops here. Hmm. But it's an academy. How do they cast? No, their sorry, stars? academy. When people come to, it's 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 strange. It's more like a university. It's a co-working space. It's a giant Almost. library. It's a giant library. Well, okay. We I'm sure Wes has, has stuff. Everything in here is, you know, strictly theoretical. They don't practice, they just learn. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm sure we should probably ask Wes for Wes before we drop the bomb on him. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get me these things also. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Um, Wes is not here, right? He doesn't have a no. He doesn't have a shop here. Wes does not have a shop here, unfortunately. That'd be very they funny. would not allow him to set an international to space space into an unstable warehouse in the middle of their great repository of knowledge. Um, yeah. Weird. Or did they? <laughs> um, okay, so do you want to go through and do the scrying thing now, and then we'll get all the research stuff out of the way? Uh, and it's a little bit out of it's going to be a bit of a strange session, so we might as well jump into it and get that bit done now if you want to. Um, Everyone's fine with it going out of sequence then? Sure. Yeah, it's, I, it, is, I it makes it easier for me to keep to things together. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll do that after the. It's going to be a strange scry. day. Okay, mm -hmm. so you want to scry up on the balcony, yes? Yeah. When we know they're having the. <coughs> around <coughs> sermon time. Okay, yeah. that's not a problem. Um. Uh. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so you cast, you cast your scrying spell. You sit down, you get your orb out, and... Giovanni, Giovanni, Giovanni. Maybe mm -hmm. try and do it above the door? I don't know, if she's a dragon, maybe she can see the, the thing? Oh, right. So, as you begin to cast your scrying ritual, you kind of set your orb down, and you start to... Uh, incant... Um, you start to reenact your arcane incantations. As soon as you start that spell, previously unseen glyphs and wards begin to appear on the wall and begin to glow. All right. <laughs> mm. oh, yeah. And you kind of notice these massive glowing purple sigils begin to pulse very close Didn't to you. Didn't they give us... Oh, wait, let's go outside. Let's go outside. Let's go outside. Do you continue uh, or do you stop? <laughs> I stop. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, yeah. And you hear a few guards shoot from Hey, no casting spells. Sorry, right. we forgot. Right. <laughs> you get one warning. Do it well. again. Kaboom. <laughs> okay, so we're heading outside. outside. I'm the taking thing. them to the um, where the teleportation circle is. That little awesome. kind yeah, of outhouse. Go around the side because the little outhouse with the uh, teleportation circle. In it. Okay. Roll a new character. <laughs> like a bus stop. Yeah. That'd be a great way to die, wouldn't it? Um, like a so bus stop with the teleportation circle. <laughs> You Great. cast your scrying ritual, and you feel the familiar sen as the spell completes. You feel the familiar sensation of you jettisoning far up into the sky, and uh, the wind blowing past as blurred visions shoot past um, on all around you. Kind of this um, strange, translucent vision, before finally f uh, settling above uh, the well of dragons. You very you quickly descend and find yourselves landing. Uh, just above the balcony, uh, where the sermons were usually being held. Uh, you have a look around quickly. You can see that there are two figures 
and stand, there are currently three figures stood on top of the balcony. Uh, the three mask wearers that you saw before. Um, the dragon mask wearers. It appears to be the one of the white masks who seems to be given the sermon today. Um, <coughs> and you listen into the you listen into the sermon, and he's a, it's the dwarven man, I, I believe. Let me just check my notes. Sorry about this. Uh, see you somewhere. Maybe. There we go. Um, it is the white one, uh, which is the male dwarf. He uh, he speaks out. Ah, welcome, welcome, my children. It's good. It's it's good to see you all again. Ah, mm. uh -huh. Avaram here. You know, remember me? Hi, hi, hi. Um, anyway, on with the sermon. But before we begin. I'd like to quell some rumours spreading around the camp. A few nights ago, we had a bit of an incident you may have noticed. Nothing to worry about, though. Everything is under control. We had a bit of an attempted break-in. We had some of the slaves being a bit ruffled. Don't worry, we've executed about two dozen just to keep them in line, you know. Uh, but the good news is, uh, we've retrieved what we lost, and everything is grand. On with the ritual at the end of the month. Hehe. <laughs> now on to the sermon, lads. And lasses. And everything in between. And he goes off into his sermon for about ten minutes. I'm not going to re rehearse an entire sermon for you. Did you just assume my dragon flight? <laughs> <laughs> they go on and you listen in for another five or so minutes as he goes through his ritualistic prayers. The bowing. <coughs> bowing of the head. Um, in silent prayer for a for, a, for an extended period of time before your scrying vision begin, finally shuts. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, are you recording? Yes. I mean, yes. Just had to check. <laughs> but yeah. I recount what he said. They're full of shit. Yeah. They Probably a ruse yeah. to keep the uh, the populace in line. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it wasn't to. Was that uh, its purpose in the first place? Maybe it's just an elaborate scheme to get all their money and stuff. Dragons do love stuff, right? Yeah. Dragons do love holds. Hmm. Yeah. I'm sure. Probably the best con artist uh, this side of the planet. <laughs> uh, we can't scry over planes, right? <laughs> so we can't no. scry on nearest parents. Well, we could try. <laughs> Squaring on nearest parents. I mean, just to make sure that we don't connect. They're they're with. Uh... Oh, Johanna, we can just send them a message checking in. Yeah. They're That's also with the planes? dragon queen, so I think. This yeah, I feel like if anybody tried to get to them, she'd give them hell. Yeah. Okay. Then we're confident <clears throat> with that at least. Yeah. Right. Should we scry on anyone else while we're at it? We try try to scry in uh, on Artemis. We did, right? He was. Yes, you did, and I believe you. Yeah. He was at the I don't arena? Think no, no, placeholder was at the arena. Placeholder. So you've managed to yeah. successfully scry on placeholder. He's at the arena. You have not successfully scryed really on anybody else. You've tried Kaleoth, you've tried Tyriel, you've tried Artemis. Um, you haven't technically tried Fred. You send in Fred. But you didn't scry upon him, and you managed to scry on Timoth as well. <laughs> right. okay. Okay. So you do know that magic is reaching Fred, though. Yeah. Well, I'm always uh, up for scrying on Fred. <laughs> I'll scry Question. on Fred. Just scry on Fred. Okay. Yes. Oh boy. Fred will make his wisdom saving throw. He's probably with Xanthus. Xanthus is his master, right? Or was? And now again, maybe. Ooh. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Betrayal. I am familiar with him, though. You are. So, I mean, he rolled yeah. in that one, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Fred. That is just yeah. so Fred. So your vision. He's too busy screaming. <laughs> your vision <laughs> shifts up again, 
and shoots you high, high into the clouds. And you begin to rush with uh, great speed, unsure of your direction, just that you currently sit uh, within the clouds. And as you do, you're used to your vision returning to Earth, but your vision doesn't. As you continue to climb, and you don't get a good glimpse of it, but you see you're rocketing towards something. Uh, you make me a perception check, actually. Oh, fuck. It's a tower the size of all the other towers. You, as you rocket, you can see... just It's difficult to make out. It's very difficult. But you can see what appears to be... a large rock? It's hard to say. Um, it reminds you a little bit of cold air. Mm-hmm. And you continue to rocket towards it. And as you do, you find yourself entering a wall, a window. <laughs> and you, and that's where your sensor stops. And you kind of look around. You can see um, Fred. Bo- full body. Mm-hmm. Flaming skull still sitting in front of the very same piano that you once had. Uh, in your kid. And you can see these strange magical tethers of like deep purple colour that seem to wrap around him, that seem to be binding him to this piano, and he's just playing the piano. Aww. He seems to actually be quite enjoying himself. Um, <laughs> but it's hard to say because his mouth is always in a smile. <laughs> is there anyone else in the room? Give another can... perception check. Yeah. Club giant. Check out the beanstalk. It's hard. The, the you seem. What you do notice is he appears to be in a very large stone room. The music yeah. is echoing around you. Um, you don't hear or see any one else or much else. It kind of focuses on Fred. And the angle that you've got doesn't really allow for much, and he just continues to play the piano for uh, for ten minutes. At the end of each song, he lets out a sorrowful. <laughs> and then continues with the next one. As your vision whoosh, rockets back and you jolt back into yourself. Fred is stuck in a floating rock in the sky and he's playing piano. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you like smoke any of Skaith's stash? By any chance? <laughs> I did <coughs> not today. <laughs> okay, good. It's like, what? <laughs> a floating rock in the sky? Yes. That's a well known, it's actually very actually. possible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like... on this plane, right? Yeah, I should be on this plane because I can't reach any other planes. Mm. <coughs> Beamed in through a window, so probably some sort of structure and not just a rock. Like a fortress or a city. Hanging City in the, in the sky. sky. Huh. How do we get up there? I wonder. Mm. Possibly we need some kind of boat that can yeah, go so to the sky. Uh, yeah. Sort of Possibly a sky boat, maybe. That is aerial, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or storm dragons or griffin miners. Oh yeah. There's oh, many, there are no, many no, no, no. no. Oh, okay, sorry. All of them. All of them. <laughs> Get the, get the sky boat and then, like, dock uh, other smaller flying creatures inside it, like a carrier. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's oh. interesting. That's good to know. Should yes. we get him, though? I don't... I'm not really sure what what's there. I mean, we can suspect cloud giants from what we know about stuff. No, we know. What are... Storm giants or cloud giants? Cloud, we I know guess? storm giants. Cloud giants storm are giants. a thing as well. Ah, oh, but they are... All right. Well, I mean, they're, aren't they cousins or something? <laughs> kind of. I wonder if they have any belts. <laughs> <laughs> they don't wear belts of their own strength. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would like a belt. What's some Um I've... Well, I, I get. Yeah, I guess we uh, will have a look at the skyships when. Oh, sorry, sky boats. Yes. Uh. When we come back to Baldur's Gate, maybe we can yeah. charter one. Maybe. 
Well, we should probably research about floating rock cities. Good while idea. We're here. Not why I yeah, that the list. I should have done this after the after the law. Okay. Oh well. That'll be one of the things you can come back to. Yeah. I'm trying, but now, now we hear you. Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so. Oh, at uh, one point, I don't care when in the continuity. It's going to be any time last night to this evening. Uh huh. Just want to grab Van off for like a five-second conversation. Feel free to grab him after breakfast. Literally, it's just going. Is he okay? Who? Who do you think? Oh, stepdad. Sorry. Conversation over. Um. <laughs> um. I. The platonic I, dad I, partner of the group because. We all yeah, 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 yeah. Weird um, uncle. <laughs> weird. Weird. Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Uncle Vesta. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I I guess as okay as you can be when you see your mother after like a really 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 long time, and then have to leave immediately and see her in sickness. So if I were him, I would say no, I wouldn't be good. But he seems to be focusing on making things better for her. That is more information than I knew previously. Um. Well, I don't think he's talking to any of us. Well, he didn't tell it to me. I just kind of... <laughs> fell, fell upon it, you know? Uh, yeah, if, there's, if there's anything in here that I shouldn't know, then speak up. No, no. No, you know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, didn't know she did. Okay. <clears throat> as long as he's a... Well, at least she's still alive. Does he know what's going on? I don't know, it seems like they don't really know what it is, or know what it is, but can't do anything. But I also highly doubt they ever made it into these walls. I have ready access to clerical magics, or arcane magics even. So, Master, my I'm, teacher specialized in curses. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping we can find something. This. Probably a positive influence Look. on our good friend. Yeah. Look. Don't be so broody all the time. <laughs> <gasps> Uh, I am the way I'm the What? I think she was talking about him. He's so. No, no Giovanni, not you. I know. I don't think He's... we can cure you. <laughs> You're a lost cause, but he may be saved. <laughs> <laughs> My brain chemistry is weird. They tried. They thought it might make me behave. Apparently, no, it's just me. But. <laughs> That's why yeah. she ended up with Mason originally, because they thought she was actually <laughs> cursed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just turns out she has good brain chemistry. But, no, but he's... You're stable, he's getting better and dearer. Look, this is me trying to say that I care about people. Does help me with this conversation, Fanon. <laughs> okay. You're doing good. Thank Why did you. you. Patting her on the head while you say that. <laughs> no, I resist the urge. <laughs> Don't want to lose your hand. <laughs> <laughs> She's strong. This, I have a feeling as of equal. Experience in life that he will talk to you first if he has a concern, and I just want you to check in because I do. One, I, I did yesterday. 
I I know you did, which is why I am. Because if he's in an actual situation and then I do it, I will probably say something wrong. So I'm basically finding more. Mm -hmm. the status quo. Yeah, yeah, okay. Stacking. I'm gonna find Geo. You want to go have a conversation with Geo? If, if this conversation consists, consists of me picking him up, hugging him, and putting him down and walking away again. <laughs> Giovanni, I would give you a, a check against this one, but you, there's no hop stop in this. Sorry. Oh. There's a strange. <laughs> he's in the middle of another conversation. I'm literally just going and they're going, Hi, what? You're exploring the grounds and she just kind of comes up and goes, Ah, lifts you off your feet. You, you, you feel your back pop in a few places that may or may not happen, should have happened. And <laughs> as you turn around, she's gone. Like a... <laughs> now, where is my doctor? So <laughs> <laughs> far, actually. Okay. At this point. Um, is there, well, is there anything else? Uh, brain work. Is there anything anyone else <laughs> wants to do apart from the research stuff today? I started all the research immediately after breakfast. So okay, I'd like all of you to. This uh, is my jam. Roll me investigation checks. <laughs> all right. We get advantage because we help each other. No, and the monks help no, us. no, 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 no. no just okay. checks. <laughs> These are long checks. <laughs> It's a group. It's a group rule. Nice. I can't want to call it. Nice. nice. What, <laughs> what even are you? <laughs> <laughs> Ranos like, just looks at the library and goes, I know. Um, I know everything. <laughs> Kung Fu. But I didn't want to know Kung Fu. <laughs> Damn it, wrong books. <laughs> um, one from you as well, Gojo. I, I, I'm trying to get my page to go. That's fine. I don't think it really makes a lot of difference at this point, but I, I can roll. I uh, feel if you want to feel like you're making a difference, please do roll. I'm trying. <laughs> you are My making a difference. Uh, oh, oh, fuck me! Really? Thirty-five. No, he's not a human. He's a half <laughs> person. <laughs> I will roll it at some point. That's fine. Oh, oh, oh! No, it's working. Investigation check. Investigation, investigation, investigation. Hey, look at that! Nice. Holy shit! Okay. <coughs> so, well, we... you guys spend the next after <laughs> getting after having your breakfast. You spend the next eight hours. You split up the work amongst yourselves. You agree which topics that you want to gather information on. Uh, you all are assigned a monk. Uh, who are quite quiet, but will happily point you in the right direction and observe you for the entire time that you are studying. You spread off, you split up and look for clues. Um, <laughs> Zin and Scaife just kind of stand at the entrance, kind of look at each other. A bit awkwardly, but... They head for the fixed intellect. Pub, pub, pub. <laughs> they go back to the pub. Uh, we'll check in with what, they, what shenanigans they get up to later. As they uh -oh. end up pissing in the herb garden. <laughs> um, but I'll leave that to them. <clears throat> okay, so just one, like I was saying before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a uh, a bit of history. I'm going to give you a general history of history, uh, and then we'll delve in. <laughs> if anyone has any questions at any point, please feel free to raise a hand or place a dot in the chat or something like that, and I will answer it when I can. Uh, and if any of this, even if it sounds stupid or doesn't make sense, do say because <clears throat> this is only partially rehearsed. So, you sit down and you do your research, and between you, this is the information that you piece together. So, a long, long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, a long time ago, an unknown amount of time, um, and this is still debated to this day, the, multi the universe that we, you know and understand to some degree became it was there and the gods came with it now people debate still to this day whether the gods were the ones who create the gods that you know were the ones who created this universe or if they merely stumbled across it it's not sure and they're also unsure if the of 
uh, the event that created this universe was the same that one that created the gods, or not, or a different one. The origins of such beings are still highly debated to this day. <coughs> However, the gods, when they came to the mo came to this universe, it was it was uh, disorganized. It was chaos. There were no individual planes. There was no uh, astral sea. There was nothing apart from chaos, elements, fighting, primordial landscapes, creatures from all over b battling and vying for survival. So they decided to place some order around it. Uh, they divvied up the domains, they divvied up the roles. This is not a huge number of gods at this time. They divvied up the roles amongst themselves and set to work bringing order to the universe. Led chiefly by the current, the god of order, the god of law and order at the time, Thurisidu. They created the planes. They created the elemental chaos. They made, cre uh, created the primaterial plane, the Shadowfell, the Feywild, and everything else in between, and housed it all within the astral sea. <coughs> they erected magical barriers and defenses between each plane to keep them separate which came for the prime material we now know today as the ley lines. Uh, these currents which both carry the magic of the, magic of the plane, d um, defend it against incursions from other sides and keep things separate, and as I said also carry the course and the veins of magic that run throughout the plane. At this point you do see, as when you get to this bit, you do see a large map, a rough charting of the ley lines. As they spread across the entirety of Faerun. Towards the edges, towards the seas, they are more extrapolations and almost guesswork to a certain degree as they wrap around, uh, wrap around. But um, you can see several key focal points where many of these ley lines converge, nexuses of power, if you will. And as you look down at the map, the map that you look at doesn't quite look exactly like it does today. You sense that um, since the, this was created, the, the lands may have changed slightly. But you do pinpoint several key uh, nexuses of energy, uh, which you do recognize. Uh, and you do, you with those rolls, you ma easily match them up to the current placement of four of the towers. One being around Waterdeep, one near the High Forest, one to the Well of Dragons, one far to the south in the tepid, tepid jungles of Chopped. And the five towers? <coughs> the five towers, right? You have been told there are. There is possibly a fifth tower. You are currently unaware of its location. Ah, right. Do we oh. see another convergence on the map of ley lines? There are smaller ones, but none to such a degree. Uh, the convergences—they almost look like small spider webs of these of like s seven, eight, nine channels of these energy that cross and overlap and interweave and kind of s almost spread out slightly in a rippling effect. Uh, and you can kind of, and you can put spot these towers, but you only see four major ones in this area. Okay, but there are other ley lines. Uh, so each plane has ley lines. This one has. So the, you see a mapping of the prime material plane. And you get mm -hmm. the and it explains that the ley lines are kind of they they exist in the domain in the in the plane and also kind of around it. They do not necessarily have a physical presence to a certain degree, uh, but they are interweaved into the plane that. itself. And each Medic. one kind of is the same. Okay. So so imagine it was kind of almost like a force cage around the planes, kind of keeping them together, which are then separated as they drift mm -hmm. through the astral sea. But okay, so there, there could be a tower in another plane. There could be a tower in another plane, um, or uh, something else. Or somewhere else. I mean, on the ocean it's guesswork, so there could be one. Indeed. Yeah. That damn dragon turtle! <laughs> 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 damn it, Keith. Anyway, um, so the gods came along and they created this. They created order, and as I said, it was the uh, the law of order at the time, Thurizadun, who led the charge, uh, who created um, the various planes, the Nine Hells, uh, the Abyss to contain, the, and he says that he created the Abyss uh, to contain demons as true beings of chaos, and uh, they were almost housed there. 
to kind of keep them separate from the rest of the planes, as were many other places as well, uh, trying to keep containing their energy so that, that um, realms like the Prime Material could exist with relative peace. When after the gods had finished, they they marvelled upon their work. They it took them god no one knows how long. It could have been centuries. It could have been millennia. It is not known. What is known is, upon their completion, it started the Age of the Divine. The Age of the Divine lasted, again, a very long time. No one really knows how, exactly how long. During this time, during the Age of the Divine, they walked among, they would walk among the plains. They would do as they pleased. They grew they grew bored, they would scrub, squabble between them, they would fight, they would argue over domains, they would uh, attack, they would create, they would empower civilizations to assist them, they would create, rise followers, entire nations were built upon their powers as they revered them so that they could gain strength and followers to impose another who was doing the same and almost in a divine arms race. <laughs> Gods, gods fought, gods died, new ones were born, and the, and the new pantheon that we know today started to take shape. As some gods were, as they fought, they were shattered, fragmented into lesser gods. Some of them elevated themselves by destroying others. Uh, one of such gods was the god Shah. Shah being one of the prime gods, one of the first gods. One of the few that helped shape the universe who is twinned by a sister god known as Saloon. During the Age of the Divine, uh, Shah and Saloon fought for dominion over day and night. Shah wanting to plunge the world into eternal nighttime, where Saloon wishes to bring sun and life to the, pl to the planet, or to the plane. In the end, it was Shah who lost. <coughs> she was defeated and banished uh, to the Shadowfell, where she bid her time and brooded in an ancient tower of her construction. Many such, many such uh, battles occurred, and as each one did, terrible, terrible devastation was wrought upon the land, as gods unleashed almost the full might of their divine power against each other. As nations would rise with their support, nations would crumble and fall to ruin, and as such, very little remains of this time. Um, as much of it was lost in calamities and earthquakes of the lands were scarred and changed um, and it was a time of great chaos after a particularly <coughs> devastating bout of wars and battles eventually uh, some of the elder gods intervened uh, they came to an agreement that what they were doing was going to eventually unmake the work that they had done to break the planes, to break the ley lines, to converge it all back into a single uh, primordial chaos. And none of them wanted that. So they formed a pact. All gods eventually agreed. Those who did not were convinced. But they agreed to a pact to no longer interfere. As they stepped away from the mortal realms, they stepped away from the plains, and decided to give it some time and see what happened, watch the mortals grow, and um, and see what they had created and see what it would become. And they did so for quite some time. <coughs> This brings us to roughly 2,000 years ago. The, type, the current date, for your information, is 1366. It's about 2,000 years ago. I'm going to use the terms BC and AD here. They're not the real terms of Rome, but it's a term we understand. So it was around 7800 BC that the, the Age of the Divine ended, and they agreed to step away, to watch. Does anyone have any questions before I continue? Okay. <coughs> as, as the Divine left, as they retreated from this world, the mortal races suffered. Many of them had become accustomed to being close to these great beings of power, even in form or even in avatar form. 
They'd almost relied upon them, and many of the mortal races, humans, elves, dwarves, and the like, they regressed. Without the great power, the great guidance that the Divine had given them, as they felt almost that they had abandoned them in some way, uh, they diminished. They were no longer the power that they once were. And again, much of their history, much of their civilization was lost to the ruins of time. But not all races were affected. During this time, uh, there are several key individuals, several key players, um, who decided to take advantage of the gods' shortfalling. Uh, being the group, the biggest and the baddest around, it was their turn to rule. As the dragons, the giants, and the remaining titans and war weapons of the of the, of the divine demigods, almost vied for power. What was known for almost two centuries of the War of the Scale and Fang. Eventually, it was Dragonkind that took over, around th roughly 500 BC. And tyrannical dragons ruled Phaedon. From afar, some too far, some, some not. Both chromatic and metallic. While the metallic ones were more um, tempered in their approach, more of protective rulers rather than evil tyrants. They still ruled the land, and they did so for, as I said, they, sorry, after about two centuries of fighting, about 150, 200 years, uh, the dragons came on, came out on top and were the dominant, the dominant species of the planet, of, of Faerun. And they ruled mankind, elves, dwarves, and all races in between for nearly four centuries. During this time, the, um, human, I will call them mankind. Uh, this is also known as the Dragon Age of Dragons, um, which lasted from about um, six is about 600 BC to around to about 100 BC, known as the Age of the Dragons. During this time, though, the human mankind mankind is not good at being subjugated. Um, they grew. They began to learn. They begin to talk to each other. The humans, the elves, and the dwarves formed alliances and decided and. Um, to overthrow that. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, is that better? Yes. My apologies. Yep. So, where, how far did you get? Where do you need to start again from? Uh, let me. Age, Age of Dragons, 600 BC to. To 600 BC to roughly 100 BC. They la the Age of Dragons lasted for about four or five centuries. During this time, mankind was uh, not very good at being subjugated. They did not like being ruled by beasts, benev benevolent or evil. And the uh, the three prime races of humans, elves, and dwarves began to uh, collude in secret. They formed alliances and they worked together. The elves lent their, their magic, the humans their numbers, and the dwarves their mastery of forge work. And they began to craft uh, weapons to fight back. And thus, led the joint collaboration of the humans and the elves led to the creation of the dragon orbs. A total of five dragon orbs were created during that war, one for each chromatic color. Uh, there are no records of metallic dragon orbs being created. Uh, it also states that the dwarves did assist in their creation by building mighty traps to subdue powerful dragons to be harvested for these the creation of these artifacts, one of which you have today. <coughs> As the orbs were created they began to cha they may they began to manipulate the dragons. Powerful wizards, powerful mages began to arise and control these orbs and then and helped turn the tide of battle against dragonkind as uh, they began as mankind began to take over. Nowadays, the dra speaking of the dragon, nowadays the dragon orbs are counted as evil, forbidden artifacts, and most are locked away in secret vaults. Though it does not tell you where they are stored. These books, not just that they are mostly accounted for, or believed accounted for, and sealed away, uh, where please places people can't get to them. <clears throat> It's also noted um, during this time. One more thing to 
get back over as well. But during this time, one of the first mages who helped craft these dragon lords, one of the first powerful wizards, was a powerful mage uh, known only as Vector. Um, as he, <coughs> which I'll come back to Vector soon. During the Age of Dragons, though, you do see, you do hear mentions. You do. There's not a lot of information, but you do come across the name Alacrona. Oh. Alacrona was one of the was one of the powerful dragon kin, but it is recorded that she betrayed dragonkind to a certain degree. During the Age of Dragons, one of their key one of their key goals was to bring back their deity Tiamat, who had been banished to the Nine Hells during the, the Age of the Divine, having lost the Battle of ba Bahamut at the Well of Dragons. And they'd vowed to bring her back. Alacron had different ideas. And ensured that they were unable to complete their task. And was oh. banished to the Shadowfell for her actions. She okay. wants to become the next Tiamat. And that's all you get on Alacron. It's not about raising <laughs> Tiamat, it's about... Elevating herself. So, during the Age of the Dragons as well, uh, I'm apologies. There's a little piecemeal. There's lots of lots of information. During the Age of Dragons as well, the divines began to stir. They had been watching for half a millennia at this point, and not all of them were pleased with how it was going. Many of the safeguards that they had put in place, many of the interdimensional barriers that they had created were not as strong as they first thought. As creatures from the Hells, from the Abyss, began to leak out into other places. Creatures from other universes, not native to this one, also began to encroach. Old, powerful deities of unknown origin begin to slide their tendrils into the primaterial plane. Strange creatures from other universes that prowled the astral sea, such as the Illithids, began to migrate to this newly formed and very fertile land. Most of the gods agreed this was natural course, that this was inevitable. Apart from one god, the god of order, the Rizidu. He, this change, this um, encroachment of chaotic forces did not set well with him, and he decreed that it was time to that they had made a mistake that, that the wars that they had fought the damage that they had done to the plains was too great, and could not be repaired they had to wipe the slate clean, and start again the other gods disagreed battles were fought the Rizadun, overpowered by the rest of the Prime Gods, was eventually sealed away in the ancient prison of Tartarus. Tia. Uh, and has been there since, ever since. Swapping back a little bit. To Vecna. As I said, Vecna was one of the... Uh, it's recorded here that Vecna was one of the first truly powerful and known human mages. Way long before the likes of the, of the Violet Circle, uh, the, sorry, the Violet Magi came to power. He's also recorded as the mage who had discovered Lichdom. He was the first Lich. And mastered the mastered death. As a human he had not he did not like the idea that he had a short lifespan. And while it was extended by magical means by some centuries, it was not enough. He eventually transcended death itself by unlocking Lichdom. Uh, and many tr many t to this day have attempted to recreate his efforts, but have also always done so done so to a lesser degree. And do not have never quite wielded the same power that Vecna once had. For his crimes, against the the true nature of the universe, Vecna was also banished. And he was banished to the Shadowfell. Where he took residence up and he took over something again, who, where, he, where he was recorded to have taken up residence within the Tower of Shah, 
which, it, which was, had been left abandoned. Rewind. As the gods sealed Thrizzadun away, sorry, this, I know this is a little low of the place, but it is recorded. As the gods sealed Thrizzadun away, they decided that they agreed amongst themselves that this was probably not the last time they would have a disagreement, that one of them would try and break the pact to intervene with mortal metals and interfere and meddle with the, with, the prime, with the prime material and its surrounding planes. So they sealed themselves away to prevent themselves being able to do so. Creating, term stolen, creating their divine gate and sealing themselves behind it so that they could still draw and send power through to the planes but could not directly intervene. All gods who had been banished were taken with them and sealed away within their own demi planes, kind of within the area. They almost lit and now exist within a layer almost above the planes. So the likes of the goddess Sha still remains within the Shadowfell, but almost a divine version of it. Uh, many of the many of the uh, many of the lesser gods who presided over the Feywild decided that they'd prefer to stay there, losing some of their power and became some of the powerful Archfey that you may have encountered today. I think that's covered all of that. Let me just cover my... Get a uh. um, it is also at this... Uh, yeah, sorry, you had a question? So, if we would go to the Shadowfell, we wouldn't find Sharp because she's in the another version of it. She's yeah, in, like basically, if you imagine if you put the the, the planes and levels, you kind of got the divine level that sits above it, and they're kind yep. of sealed above that. So she's still tied to the Shadowfell, but cannot interact with it. Okay. The same so there would way... only be Vecna and not uh, her? Unknown. Vecna's in, in current current status is unknown. Yes, yeah, it's just right. I mean, just yeah. uh, to make it... Uh, no, no, you're right, yeah. So some of the gods, some of the gods are a bit more lucid. Uh, but some of them, like um, the one uh, Thero's got, the god of the hunt, uh, Sylvanas, is tied to the Feywild, for example. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Shah to the Shadowfell. And various other things. Um, so. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It also, I will say, just to throw it in there, um, during the Age of the Dragons, during the Dragon Age, as. Um, dragons ruled the world. This is where also the dragon cults originated. Um, that's where they first set down their roots. As as some has, as the divine left the world so as, and dragons took their place, some began to revere them as gods. And that is the original roots of the cult of the dragon, which has descended through to the modern age. Okay. <coughs> Anything about storm drakes? doesn't say anything up there apart from I'll get to the dragons in a second a little bit more but uh, that there are mutations and offsets there are more than the standard chromatics but it doesn't go into too much detail because a lot of it is lost information which I'll come to now mm -hmm. so anyway as the humans the dwarves the elves as they all work together to turn the tide of battle against dragon kind they began to win and they began to win quite convincingly with the power of these dragon orbs at their sides and the combined forces between them. They were doing a pretty good job. And eventually it was around roughly um, 100 BC. Um, that 150 BC that rule over dra the rule of dragonkind was declared over as mankind had freed themselves. However, the dragons were still around, but mankind had not forgotten. Over the next three to four hundred years, um, around three to four hundred years, dragons were hunted viciously. Chromatic more than metallic, however, not everyone could tell the difference. Metallic dragons had played a part in the Age of Dragon, but were, for the most part, benevolent rulers. But as time went on, that distinction was lost. Bounties were put out for dragons. Dragon heads were highly sought after trophies and huge rewards were placed for them. And they were hunted nearly to extinction. Those that survived went into hiding and have not been seen to this day. They may still be there, they may not. It is currently unknown. However, it is thought that the 
those dragons that have survived are among the oldest and most powerful and most dangerous. And there is believed there are at least a dozen of them still hanging around somewhere in Faerun. <coughs> um, but there are, their current locations are unknown. Following this, there was a period of several centuries. Um, uh, following the end of Dragonkind, the human history, mankind's history, kind of picked up again, and records began to be uh, to be forged once again, and we kind of hit the zero mark. For several centuries, there was bickering. After, after mankind almost freed itself, it was not content. It was still warlike. It was still pretty base, pretty primal in some ways. Humans still gathered in tribes. Elves um, kept their cities with their magics and dwarves um, to their un, un, under mountain fortresses. It took some time for order to begin to right itself once again. Um, it was around. Um, Sure. Sorry. Yeah. So elves, elves, dwarves, and humans were buddies, as long as they had a common enemy, and then they were like, mm, maybe don't we don't like each other as much. As time broke, as time went on, as the old wars were forgotten and humans began to spread, um, old animosities began to flare up, and as people are wont to do, for what fighting brought out, mainly amongst the humans, but the elves and dwarves were not spared. And it took about f about 400 years, ish, for things to settle down, for the human, for powerful leaders to arise within within each race to finally bring, attempt to bring peace to the land. It was around this time that large cities and metropolises and um, estates that you know today were beginning to be founded. For example, Waterdeep was founded around roughly 400 AD, nearly nine, nearly a thousand years ago now, and. Um, other se other centres, Baldur's Gate, Daggerford, Neverwinter, to a lesser extent, the likes of Mirabar, began to began to grow and began to flourish. Unfortunately for the other races, humankind spread far faster and adapted far quicker than they ever could, um, and quickly rose to become the dominant race upon the planet. Humans, man, parasites. They, sp they spread like flies. <laughs> The elves, as <laughs> after they threw off the chains of oppression, the elves and the dwarves were both quite surprised with how quickly the hum humankind adapted. Uh, being such a, a short-lived race, they lived fast and hard. They spread, they grew new settlements, they entered <coughs> unknown territories, ta tamed primal lands, and uh, it scared them. Um... And they almost retreated into themselves and sealed themselves away. Uh, the dwarves digging deeper, the elves sealing themselves within ma within powerful cities uh, in magic. The uh, well, high elves, what elves, kind of shrinking further back into the forests as, hum as human lands and human farming land to chop down vast areas of 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 woodland. And this is so some of where the incursions, some of where the fights also broke out. But we get to about 400 AD, nearly a, th nearly a thousand years ago, and things began to settle down. As I said, the large civilizations began to bloom. Um, it wasn't long after that, a few centuries passed before the likes of the Lords and Lions began, began to be founded, as the, as the primary um, civilizations along the Sword Coast began to work together towards mutual trade agreements. Uh, the College of Neverwinter was, was set up for ma magical studies. Um, the Bard's College of Arm began to flourish and people began to flow freely. And from around that time, for the last probably about 600 years-ish, there have been events, there have been um, wars, there have been fights, there have been scruffles, but um, Faerun has enjoyed a um, a period of relative peace for the last sorry, I'm sorry, technical issues again for the last six or so hundred years. Oh, apologies, my roll twenty is broken, so I just need to quickly fix that. Uh, let's put that over there. Let's do that. Uh, yeah, more technical issues. Anyway, so yes, um, it's for the last six, roughly five to six hundred years. P 
peace has reigned over the Sword Coast and the surrounding areas. And that is pretty much what you learn during your research of the Lore Dump. So, whew, does anyone have any questions based on what I've gone through already? I've tried to go through your list. There are a few things I have missed purposefully. Um, but, does anyone have any questions to start with? Um, I'm not, um... So, just to sum up, Age of the Divine, Gods made universe, gods found the universe, gods created order, gods fought, gods caused major calamities, gods said, let's back up. Dragons took over. Um, Through Zadoon went, eh, probably shouldn't let them do that. World's getting a bit weird. Let's go back and sort this out. Other gods went, no, get back in your fucking box. Let's make a barrier. Doof. Humans and all, humans and elves and dwarves got together, fought off the dragons. They won. They squabbled a little between them. Humans spread like a fucking rash. And boom, we're here we are today. That is a TLDR of the history of Faerun, according to Nathan. Alright. So, does anyone have any questions based on what I've just said? Like I said, there are a few things on there, for example, Mamma Miasma's illness and also the rest of the um, the other acolytes of Thurisadun. Um I've missed that out purposefully. Any other questions based on that? Or I, any... I have less a question and more working out a theory based on stuff that you've just said. Okay. So, and it's like it was a personal theory, but it's just like the Rowan Woods, the place that like have already been holding for generations. Yes. And it's got that mystical tree. Yes. So if if the gods kind of departed from this plane and the barriers are failing, I'm just having a theory that it's so I'm working through a theory in my head that's kind of all this connected one of those last elements of like divine passage. Yep. place because that's what we did. Yep. So it's just it's confirming a theory in my head. But so, that makes as part of the war of the gods and the the war between the gods and the age of the divine, as I as it is written, <laughs> uh, they did damage the 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 the, the, the universe. There are areas where the planes are not quite as strong as they once were. You've seen evidence of this. The Rowan Woods, um, the Maelstrom Palm Monastery, Gauntelgrim, as Gauntelgrim sunk in, it was Gauntelgrim sink connecting with the Abyss, um, the Maelstrom Palm Monastery connecting with the Elemental Plains, the Rowan Woods and the Feywild. There are weaknesses chinks in the armour, as it were, of the planes, which is primary, pro, precisely what Thurizadun saw and wanted to fix. But doing so would unmake everything. It, it sometimes takes a while for Natasha to kind of work out. Like, it's alright. <laughs> so that is what you learn as a group from your initial studying. Actually, I say you'd also do notice, note that, I will just quickly slip this in there, that Vecna did have many apprentices. One of those was Xanthus. Hmm. Xanthus nice. betrayed the Council of Six, of the, of the Violent Magi is one of his founding members, to pursue Vecna instead. Um, and learned some things, apparently. But I didn't learn of any, uh, like, present... Day, uh, present day apprentices. No, so oh. Vecna was banished to the Shadowfell roughly nine hundred years ago. Oh, yeah, been a while. Um, it was a while, uh, yeah. nine, maybe me even a thousand years ago. Probably, even, mm. probably, sorry, probably longer than a thousand years ago. Cause it was prior to the birth of the of Waterdeep. So Vecna was banished a long time ago um, to the Shadowfell and. There is currently no known information on his current status. Mm. You also learn about Morden Canaan, just a very quick tidbit on him. Morden Canaan was originally born in Waterdeep, um, grew up there uh, to a wealthy merchant family, the name forgotten. Um, decided to, att um, using his father's wealth, attended the, the newly blossoming Academy of Neverwinter, 
uh, the Netherwind Medical Academy, which you visited. Um, found it to be not to his liking, and after touring a few too many experiments that uh, not everyone agreed with, was effectively kicked out and then made his way to Candlekeep for self-study. Uh, after a few years there, decided it wasn't qu as um, Tethril told you, decided it wasn't quite what he was looking for and departed on his own, taking much of his knowledge with him. That was about seven to eight hundred years ago. Hmm. Along with his apprentice, Wesley. So, so to get to Mordenkainen's base, we should probably go through there, through Wes. <laughs> Weslim yeah. is currently the only known link to Mordenkainen. Yeah. He has not been seen um, for centuries. His current status is unknown, though many Westland, many doubt him to be dead. Mordenkainen. Sorry, you you mean Mordenkainen? Because Mordenkainen. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Mordenkainen has not been seen for centuries. All right. His current whereabouts whereabouts and status are unknown. All right. Um, mm. Well, time flows differently on other planes. Mm -hmm. Actually, I will say with that role as well, you do come across a few theor Ranos, you come across a few theoretical, a uh, few theoretical articles about um, this not being the only set of planes. Other sets of planes. Other universes entirely. Because so other multiverses. A, a multiverse, as it were. Yes. A multiverse and created with lots of universes. So there we're we're one things. multiverse. And I there might say, be another. I'd say, in the terminology that I'm using, this is one universe consisting of planes. Yeah. And there are mul There are. It is theorized that there are multiple of these, and it's theorized oh. that that is where the other beings that invaded this universe came from. So because they had to come from somewhere. Okay. Is it, is Baron it, is not in inside this universe. No. And that's where you start moving into. Is it a multiverse or is it space? It is unknown. No one has pierced that veil quite yet. Space. But it's also technically where the Spelljammer universe comes from. You can tell them into a sci fi guy. <laughs> yes, Spelljamming is quite cool. So, yeah. oh, should you break it. through um, the this universe, then we run into a Spelljammer campaign. But um, And that's very, very different. But, but it, no one has ever been able to substantially prove the existence of other universes, however it is heavily theorized based on previous recordings and the actions of certain creatures and the divines themselves. Um, it is theorized that there is a level of divine above the current divine. Uh, I, I have a question which Certainly. I may have come across the answer to. Uh, how do I, uh, or how does one get to the Shadowfell? Uh, there are multiple ways. Uh, there are known weaknesses. To, there are. Do I find a list? <laughs> you do not find a list. Unfortunately, you do not find it documented. Mm -hmm. But there are known weaknesses to the Shadowfell. There are weaknesses to um, Feywild, to the Elemental Planes. And they exist for the Shadowfell as well. However, it does not exactly say where. Mm. It also says a good, old, a good old plane ship <clears throat> spell will get you there as well. Oh, Perfectly right. theoretical. <laughs> yeah. And so, just to, I, I know I spoke about this all out of order, but you had Sha was banished to the Shadowfell. She created her own tower there, where she lived. After the Divine Gate incident, she got sucked up, and then Vecna took over. Yeah, so Vecna lives in Sha's tower. <laughs> Potentially. Perfect. Worst roommate ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a lot of weird noises, I don't know. Just Sha looking down, like, Stop moving my pillows! Get out of my bed! <laughs> Uh, liches. Is this a hand in the fridge? Something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, something. All, all of the paintings. But yeah, so um, that is where it goes. That's what it goes into. The, the the knowledge of dragons that you find near it is pretty much on pick and cut on par with the rest of it with what you've already found out. There is little mm -hmm. information on them because most of them were, were wiped out, and those right. who weren't fucked off. Um, Do we have any names for the ones that weren't? No. Every known dragon was hunted, hun hunted and killed. 
mm. unfortunately. And there is, it, it, they even record recountings of uh, certain areas not taking bounties on metallic dragons. So, in, And there had been known stories of people hunting down metallic dragons and painting them. <laughs> to collect the bounty. Mm. Just for the gold wow. and the fame. Oh, can dragons hibernate? Um, it, dragons can do... It, it does state that the most ancient and powerful dragons, their abilities are formation. unknown and spectacular. Mm-hmm. They're reptiles that can probably brumate, they which do. is like hibernation, but not quite. They can, they can do some interesting stuff. Things like shapeshifting, <laughs> magics. Yeah. Um, so they might be just walking around, trolling everyone. Maybe. They could be among you. Right this moment, one of you could be a dragon. I'm going to look at Neil and go, Are you a dragon? Maybe. <laughs> and then I'm going to look at Japan and go, Are you a dragon? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't so, tell anyone, though. For your group, for the four of you, pouring over... This is because this information is... The information that I've given you isn't, isn't in a single tome. Right. right. It we take, just have books upon books upon you have, books. You take out people. dozens of tomes and you kind of just, you spend, you almost have like a study group, uh, and you spend a lot of time piecing piecing together bits of information. There are bits, lots of information you go over that I haven't gone through, more specifics obviously, which you can recall at a later time or I can give you more information on it uh, later on. But this is the this is kind of the law, the history, and the information that you piece together from about three dozen textbooks, tomes, articles, journals, um, studies, and the like, and kind of form into this general consensus of knowledge that you speak about mm-hmm. over the course of about eight hours and learn. Um, any any additional information that um, is not necessarily what I would consider covered of what you've gone. So if you ask me a question in a week's time, and if you I feel you would have covered it in that point, awesome. However, you know, other information such as magic countering, uh, such as um, illnesses, such as Zod Xanthus. Uh, Zod pops up a little bit, but um, Xanthus pops up a little bit, but um, Falderai and um, Arundel would require additional research time, which would have, probably have to be tomorrow. So you can spend more time here and addition, do additional research on certain topics that I have not told you about yet, but it is going to cost you more time. Let's pull an all-nighter. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually okay with that. What it's about Modwin? Um, you, Modwin is addition. Modrin's extra. So did we cast Legend Law? No, we haven't. You have But we could. Uh, oh, after eight hours else. of research, we should probably, you chill know, out, chill out with a cool spell. Yeah. <laughs> to get more. Step outside for a bit. Get some more air. <laughs> but let's do it outside so we don't we don't get pulverized. Yeah. Unless yeah. we have something else that we would prefer using the Legend Law spell on. You you need to do, do we? How does the spell work actually? Uh, post it. So what do we have, actually know about Modwin? Do we know the order she comes from, or I don't do we think know, we know anything? Is Modwin is a magically Raging. enchanted sword. Yeah. And a raging idiot. Um, uh, he really <laughs> doesn't also, like demons. Like, yeah, and she also really likes her old master. <laughs> Who no, likes her old master, but doesn't know anything about her, him okay. or her. Right. Uh, don't assume. Right. <laughs> um, that's all. We, so Modwin kind of has apparently been around for a while. You're not sure if it's it's a sentient item, something imprisoned within the item. Hmm. What it is. The thing you named is not of legendary importance, you gain no information. Oh, uh, um, I will happily work with that. Can you just go with, hi, Morgan, sorry, we can't give you any information about yourself, you're dead, Del. You're, you're, you're only <laughs> epic, you haven't reached legendary tier yet, so we can't <laughs> identify you, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, it, right. Sod knew nothing about itself, so that's kind of lame of it. Um, yeah. Um, I guess we Sorry, maybe should. Sorry, from the bag. 
we should probably maybe uh, wait uh, until we have done our, all our primary research, primary research and see if there's um, anything that the books don't talk about that we would like to know about. Yeah, I mean, we we know stuff about the other legendary about the other legendary items that we have, right? You've got you got decent information about um, the dragon. Because I'll, I'll just for your all reference, um, I'll allow you to. Um, I'll give you a little bit more. I'll just give you Quipple a. Um, a little bit of information about the artifacts. So you have the Feather Gale, uh, which was a gift to uh, the uh, Archfey from some powerful air elementals from Jin. Um, for unknown deeds, but it was a gift to them. Um, kind of, it was a kind of a joint collaboration between the Fey and the air elementals, uh, the Jin, as it were. Um, to create this item, which was then gifted to one of the el the Fey slash Elven champions. The line, the further back you go, Elves and Fey kind of blur a little bit. Uh, you have the Chakrams of Mordenkainen, which very little is known about, uh, apart from that they were they are a, some kind of weapon created by Mordenkainen, uh, and currently stored within his hidden lab. Um, you also know about the Hand of Vecna, which is, you can probably piece together, it's Vecna's hand. It's probably in the Shadow film. And you also know about um, the Storm Shield, which was uh, wielded by the Storm Giant champion Thrym in the battle against the dragons during this, the, the War of Fagged Scale, and was lost um, uh, during an epic sea battle, and disappeared to the ages, apparently somewhere nearby in the sea. Um, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, that's all four of them. The missing. So... The Hand of Vecna and um, Chakrams, you probably couldn't research much of them anyway. It's up to you if you want to spend some time on the Feather Gale and um, the Storm Shield. But this is the information the Collector gave you. Yeah. Well, let, let's save the... You want to save the Legend Lore? Not, not, yeah, not mod so. winning it? No, not mod win I think there's better stuff to cast it on. <laughs> mod win feels sad. Yeah. Sorry, Modwin. Not it's finding fine. your backstory you today. <laughs> you do know, Giovanni, that Boulder's Gate does hold one of the greatest stock markets in the Sword Coast and beyond. Mm. Not quite as good as Arm, that's Cattler, but pretty damn good. Regularly trades there. So, additional ivory may not be too difficult to come across. Just uh, just throwing that out there because you're from the area. Yeah. Um, but Tomorrow anyway, then. Maybe. So, okay. So, what are we researching now? <laughs> I will say, based on what you've glass. done, it's taken you a lot of time and energy to get this far. You can do some additional rolls and checks if you want. You will take um, probably double exhaustion um, yeah. if you want to, because uh, you've you spent you spent because of the rolls you've been quite strenuous and you've been very thorough, thorough with this information. You've got more than you probably kind of with a collaboration. So you can carry on if you want, but it will be costly. Or you do have the option to pay and um, research, get someone else to do the research for you. I'm just making sure your options are clear to you. Rather than how long say, did we this. ask? How long is researching on our behalf would take? No, but you can have that conversation. It kind of comes down to cost. The faster you want it, the more it costs ah, you. Okay. How much would it cost? Um, you can pay up to a thousand gold a day. Um, thousand gold a day will get you a dedicated scribe to research things for you, depending on how much you give them and what that takes. Will depend on roles. And if you want to, you could, but you could hire multiple scribes at an additional thousand gold per day. I feel like we would have given them the more general stuff that's more in the realm of history and all the. Vecnai stuff and secret stuff that w we would have researched personally, I guess. I guess that does make sense in hindsight. Um, we it's can too late now. We can do a generalized information. If you, depends how much you want to spend some money on, money on. The information you gain at the end would be pretty much the same. 
I think it's been another day, right? So deep. <laughs> this is where I mention that I have. I have what? situation. I have a water. Sorry, you're cutting in and out, Joe. So, not much. I mean. But we are so greedy. Who else are you going to spend your money on? Sky I am greedy Sky for this situation. If what Giovanni, is, Giovanni said, sky boats are expensive. I I could probably afford that as well. I, I'm not so sure. Boats are expensive. And flying boats are even more expensive. Let's have a look at how much money you've actually got. I have 17,000 gold. Oh yeah, that's not a lot of money. First boats are concerned. A decent sized galleon would cost you about 20 grand. I've, yeah, I've almost got that. I've got my own loot plus gems. Always... But it's a galleon. This is a flying thing. And it yes. probably requires magic and... Uh... We could steal one. I have sure. 21,000. Commandeer one for the greater good. <laughs> the greater good. 20. It's up to you guys what you want to do. I have to, about 22,000 worth of gold and gems and Yes, stuff. let's spend another day <laughs> researching. Okay. Do you want I mean, to... I think we, we went roughly half of it now. You've gone through a good chunk of it. It's the nitty gritty <laughs> of each of the individual. It's a stupid name. I couldn't think of a better one. But the the five disciples uh, are the Oblivions. We'll call them that. Um, it's the Oblivious. Oblivious. <laughs> they follow the trained Oblivions. Ist. Ist. Oblivious. Ist. Oblivious. Oblivious. Right? Okay. <laughs> we are the Oblivious. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oblivious. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, but if you want to do some nitty-gritty researches on the likes of Vecna, the Oblivious, um, anti-magic or magic resistance um, <coughs> effects and how to do them, um, and also things like the illnesses, it will take you a little bit longer. Yeah, let's get through some more today, hopefully, and the rest tomorrow. Very well. Could we at least identify the right books, even if we didn't then read them? So if you spend like an extra another half a day, I can give you the additional information. Yeah, let's uh, do it. And once you once you start reading a page and then you have to read it again, then you doze off and read it again. Then we should probably stop. Okay. Yeah. I will ask for another round of investigation checks for you. This time with disadvantage. <laughs> but based on the previous rolls, it didn't make a fucking difference. So. <laughs> <laughs> Still above ten. <laughs> Not bad. You are the magic nerds for a reason. Mm -hmm. KJ with us? Yep. No, I'm the one having problems. It's fine. Ah, I I always expect that things are coming. <laughs> Unfortunately, Nira's nope. a little bit sleepier. Um, she got she got a head start on the dragons and it kind of flagged in a bit earlier. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to... I just fell asleep on top of the book. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put a list down. So we want Vecna, uh, Oblivious... I still can't spell it. Uh, Vecna and the Oblivious, <coughs> Magical Resistances, and um, Muscle Degeneration Diseases and Curses. Yep. I am... Oblivious, yep, yep, yep. Anything else that I haven't gone through that you'd like more information on? I think the storm shield is the only one we really have no clue shields. on by this point. I want my shield. <laughs> Towers we got, ley lines we got. I did. I don't know what you guys were chatting about in your secret. secret I, did, I think we. Uh, what I posted in in the visual keep channel is pretty much what we uh, accumulated. Okay, so we've got Vecna, the Oblivious, Magical Resistances, Muscle, gener muscle Degeneration, Diseases and Curses, st the Storm Shield. Pfft. Anything else on gods? Or anything like that? Or anything else? I just want to try and get a full list. I think we got everything on Shah. Any other gods that are on Shah, Tim. Therese Dune, we also we've got, got some info. information. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I. You probably guessed this at this point, but uh, when Theresa Doom was sealed away, his duties and stuff were farmed out to other gods, the likes of um, Helm and Tor and Tyr. Torm and Tyr kind of took over that kind of law and order, and his domains were shared up amongst them. 
uh, when one god falls, other kind of fill the gap in. I didn't mention that, but I am it, it, that, that was kind of how was... <laughs> That's it. Um, so, that's your list. Now, this is something I, uh, rather than just spew stuff to you, because I was looking at the time as well, I'm going to go away and get you more information on these and get you some proper details. If you're spending an extra half day on these p specific topics, I will generate more lore for you on these. I've got it, but I want to kind of collate it first. So, mm -hmm. I will come back to you on those ones, if that's okay with you. Oh, that's fine. Ooh. Ooh, if ooh, I ooh. have any extra... I just want to look something upon Fey Badges. Like, as a really, like, light bedtime reading. Fey <laughs> Fey Badges. Slash Badges. I don't think you'll find a specific book on Fey Badges. Maybe Fey Creatures. Anything on Fey Creatures slash Badges. Slash you. But it's just, like, very light bedtime reading. It's not the focus of my attention. So I can't. That's fine. you got an okay <laughs> check. Um, so, okay. I will get get you more information on those, and I will post them back to you, and I will, we will go through that in a kind of a. Uh, I look at the time. We'll go through that next session. Uh, you can help me beat the book. <laughs> got, I, I thought I was. Then we do have time book. for uh, Modwin. If you want to do Legend or Modwin, you can do. It's up to you. It's up to Giovanni. Yeah, let's do it. Fuck it. Let's, <laughs> let's spend the outside. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's go outside. Okay. Let's be extra nice to to, to it, right? Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> as you go outside and you take Modwin out of the bag, she's currently sheathed, and as soon as you reach in and you pull, do you have, uh, who's retrieving Modwin? I am. Okay, you go in, you re reach your hand into the bag, and you grasp Modwin's hilt. And already you can feel it shaking as you're kind of pulling out the bag. <laughs> and rattling around in the sheaf, you can hear almost muffled, <laughs> really angry shouting from within the sheath. Um, however, it is covered by the sheath and kind of thing. A few of the guards kind of like look over and you're just like, no, it's fine, it's fine. Sword. No. It's I a talking sword. Magic sword. Nothing to worry about. So, it's up to you. You can cast Legend Law just by using the hilt. Uh, or you can unsheath Modwin. I'll unsheath Modwin. Okay, as you pull it out just a tiny bit, you see the hint of blade. Just a torrent of profanities and curses. And why the fuck is you put me in this bag? I've been here for like fucking three months. Why have you I thought we were going to kill some demons. What's going on? Where are we? And goes on for about three minutes. When she's done, I'll just say, Glad we got that out of the system. Now, I'm actually going to help you. Wait, you're going to put me back in the fucking bag? No. I would like to wield you. Fuck off. You put me in I a bag also... for three months. That's not relevant. I think it is very fucking relevant. That's also in... not correct. I also... The bag's weird, okay? <laughs> the bag is weird. No, he's blindfolded. He was and also he he um he Giovanni was also in the bag, so he's no stranger to your experience. Yes, I've been yeah. inside. Well, you know it's I've horrible in there. Don't put me back in there. You're I both won't. victims I together. <laughs> I want to help you. I want to help you find your previous master. That was what we agreed originally. Yes. Yeah. And now, uh, time has come. If a sword could look at you with um, distrustful eyes, it, it yes. is. You kind of feel, you kind of oh, get no. the mental distrust. Uh, as you oh. say, hmm. I'm going to cast a helpful spell. Nothing dangerous. Uh, no, no bags. Just a helpful spell to, to sort of ease everything and sort of make make this whole transition very smooth. I don't trust you in the slightest, but I got a fucking choice. Exactly. Jeez. And I cast a <laughs> cast legend law. Oh, that tingles. If you cast legend law, uh, a flood of information comes to your mind. You don't know a huge amount about Modwin originally, and it doesn't quite fit legendary status, so it's a bit garbled. But you get some information. You do know that Modwin was a weapon, a sword. Modwin was a person. Long. 
long ago. Hmm. The time is difficult to pinpoint, but you'd guess maybe somewhere between six and seven hundred years ago. Modwin was a woman. Um, a half elven woman. A fighter, a warrior. Uh, a champion to her people. Uh, she hailed from a small village uh, somewhere in a wooded area that no longer exists. And kind of into the south, uh, southeastern side um, from Boulder's Gate. Not far from here, even. Uh, where she wed a, a human man by the name of Athramor. Hmm. And they went adventuring together. Uh, they formed an adventuring duo. Uh, they travelled the land. And as, the, as uh, mankind settled, they travelled from place to place, completing missions, completing quests. Uh, very much in love. Uh, they battled the forces of chaos. They fought demons, devils, dragon, ki small evil dragon kind, and were relatively well-renowned adventurers. <coughs> Until they came across and befouled a certain wizard, <coughs> uh, a wizard uh, whose name is lost at this point. Uh, but the, uh, the certain was they battled the wizard and they won. But, not, but at a cost, as Modwin was slain during the uh, during the battle, and as the mage's last wish cursed her and trapped her soul within a, within a powerful gem. After more, beside himself, kept Mod kept uh, his fallen lover, kept Modwin with him, and eventually uh, decided to honor her by getting that gem built into his sword. Hmm. This had an unintended side effect, as Modwin, uh, Modwin and a strong warrior spirit um, became bound together. Uh, Modwin, Modwin's warrior spirit and the sword became bound, and the weapon that you see before you today was forged, as Modwin became, uh, became one with the sword, as after a more once her partner became almost her wielder, her master, the two f continued to fight together for many, many years and as Athramor aged. Um, the details are um, vague, but they did end up in the Abyss. After fighting a particularly powerful demon that was sent back to the Abyss, clawed them back with him, and they were left to wander the Abyss for a long, long, for a long time. You do find that Athramor, from the legend lore, did perish in in the hell. Sorry, not in the hells, in the abyss. You also know where he's buried. Um, he's buried. Oh, he's buried somewhere on the seventh level of hell. The, the kind of you get the general idea. Modwin was lost during that time and was picked up by many wielders, but who could never really wield Modwin as he could, and she was abandoned. Too many issues. Wait, so she was found in. She so Athramor and her went to the hells. Sorry, went to the yeah went to the hells by accident, effectively, similar to how you did. Athramor mm -hmm. died there, and other adventurers. But were, not in the abyss. Not in the abyss. Sorry, I meant the sorry the hells. My mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, cause it's devil shit, not demons. Uh, they they did Athramor did fall in battle there, uh, slain by a powerful arch devil. Which, whose name I have in my head but can't quite get, but I'll confirm for you as part of the thing. But was slain by a powerful, powerful archdevil. The weapon tra traded hands many times and eventually was abandoned for its pesky nature and effectively sat dormant for nearly half a millennia. As, Mod as the enchantment began to fade, Modwin lo began to kind of forget and lose what was truly um, certain to her. And that is when you found her. Modwin? What? I must say I'm... I'm terribly sorry for your loss. Well, I've lost my master, of course. Yes. We, this is exactly what we're talking about. Fucking more. But he wasn't only your master, was he? I don't know. I mean, no, he wasn't. 
sheepish look. No. <laughs> he was your lover? Your husband? The sword is silent. <laughs> In thought. Listen. Go up. If you allow me to wield you in battle, I promise you, I will seek out the devil, insert name here, yeah. and, <laughs> and plunge the sword, and, and plunge your blade into his chest. That's the devil's will you name. take me on as your champion? In Sir Namus. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I'll get a proper name for you, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> um... One of the things I can't do on the fly is names, I'm sorry. Um, but... Uh, um, um, you t I kind of remember a few things. Can you be a bit more specific? Memory's a bit cloudy. Been a sword for a while. Yes, right. Feel free to relay the information. just as I do, yeah. <laughs> About the, the wizard and the uh, yes. fighting. As you relay this information, you kind of almost, as you're having this conversation, Modwin's almost psychic power and psychic essence uh, feeds, almost feeds into you slightly, and you feel emotions. Remembrance, happiness, regret, sadness, anger. A tear rolls from my face, from my cheek. <laughs> no, that's all right, Un unintentionally. The sword is silent for quite some time. And then it speaks. You've got a deal. You, you said I couldn't. I, you wouldn't let me kill de devils before. Let's go kill some devils. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's. And I Very well. What's your, what's your name? <laughs> My name is Giovanni Miasma. Okay. Let's go. Let's give it a score, Diego. Doctor Giovanni Miasma. Oh, Mr. Fancy Pants. Fine. Yes. <laughs> Very well. Let us go, minion. And she flies up into your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Giovanni Grain gains Modwin. Yes. Nice. You can now attune to Modwin. Cool. And uh, I'm proficient. And are uh, proficient. Cool. There you go. I think, based on the time and what I've got left, I think that's a good place for us to end. Sorry, it's a short... I apologise, it's a short session. It's a sh no, no, no. I can't I'm speak properly. For that. I Huge legend dump. Yes, yeah. uh, hopefully that was enough yeah. information for you. DM's wet dream, man. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Um, <laughs> for the recording, uh, well, feel free to come back and have a look at this. There's nothing really that you can't see. Um, so, ending the recording now for anybody who's watching it. Ta-ta! Um, bye, future. Might actually go back and type.